So this is probably the hottest story on the internet. Uh, Mr. Seth Rich, if you, <laughs> you'd have to be living in a bubble to not know who Seth Rich is. Seth Rich is the DNC uh, employee back in 2016, who uh, up to now we still think is the, uh, the WikiLeaks uh, leak, the person who leaked uh, John Podesta's emails and, and uh, Hillary Clinton's, all the correspondence between uh, those folks, right? And uh, actually Seth was the director of voter expansion uh, ex- director of voter expansion data. He's on the phone right now, so he's gonna he's gonna come in in a second. He was the director of voter expansion data at the DNC leading up to the uh, the convention, uh, right? The election of uh, either Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton. It's alleged that he's a Bernie Sanders supporter. I haven't spoke to him yet. I just briefly got him on the phone. He's calling from Israel, and uh, everybody thinks he's dead, but it turns out he's not dead. So uh, let me let me bring him into the fold. Seth, are you there? As Mr. Conti, I'm here. Marcus, Marcus, thank you so much. Uh, I, I I've been, you know, this is a very, it's a very, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous, uh, but uh, I think it's necessary that uh, that I come out and I address the people and uh, tell them what really happened. So uh, I I thank you for letting me have that opportunity to do it. Hey, listen, you're, you're thanking me. I'm, we're thanking you. We're, we're so, first of all, we're very, we're very happy that you're, that you're still alive, and uh, that's pretty amazing, right, that you are alive. So, so I, I, I'm often accused of talking too much, so I'm going to shut up. I want to, I want you to tell me, bring us back to, bring us back to the DNC, bring us back to, you know, early July, <clears throat> excuse me, 2016ish, and. Um, you know, t- tell us tell us what was going on inside. You guys got it. You had an eye with you had a, a you know bird's eye view. So tell us what was going on. Yeah, so I was the the uh, I was put in the position to, as the director of the, uh, the you know new. I was basically the cheerleader to get, to get a lot of the young people, the millennials, to vote and to register to vote and to contribute to the DNC financially. Get we needed people on the ground to go knock on doors and. I was basically the coordinator slash director of that uh, that startup, and I mean it was very clear that the DNC was not uh, it was not non biased whatsoever. They were clearly favored Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders. They they went to the extreme of actually getting he, they wanted me to rally young people to contribute to the DNC. And then they were taking that money and giving it to Hillary Clinton. So it was it was really uh, it was ugly. It was it was unfortunate. And uh, I was in that position. You know, I, I had access to all their emails and I saw the conversations and I had I was I had conversations with with Eric Braverman and I, you know I was there. And uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, the story that everyone knows is pretty accurate. The the, the idea that. Russia was responsible for the hack or the or the corruption inside of the DNC is just simply not the case. We know that there was there was no in my experience in my at my time at the DNC I never saw uh, any Russian. I never saw the Russians. Uh, there was no Russians. It was Hillary Clinton. It was John Podesta. It was Robbie Mook leading the way. They were telling us what to do. And ultimately, they were cheating Bernie Sanders, who was clearly the favorite. People wanted him to win. People were behind Bernie Sanders. And they kept trying to elevate Hillary Clinton. And so I had stumbled across those emails. Yes, I am the leak. I gave those. I sent the stuff over to, to Julian Assange. He seemed to have been the best... Uh, most honest broker to have given that information to. We had considered. I'll I'll just leave the we uh, as me for now. There's other people if they want to come forward and talk, and uh, they can go ahead and do that. But essentially, I was the. Uh, I had access to these emails and I started reading them and I I just made a copy and I sent it on. I figured out how to send it on to Julian Assange out in England. 
and he published them, and that's that's really that's really all she wrote. You know, this is just it's so fascinating. I mean, it's just so it's such a fascinating story that you were you basically. I mean, it's arguable that your your leak of that of that information to the general public through the through the through WikiLeaks, in fact. It did. It did change the election. I mean, it changed a lot of people's minds. People suspected that there was cheating going on, and and, uh, and now you're you're confirming that they were cheating, and that you you did in fact do the right thing, and and, and rather than watch the cheating, you you did the right thing. You're you're, you're a hero in, in that respect. So, let's talk now about the um, let's talk about the the, uh, the 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 alleged killing. Right, you're still alive. You're not dead. Right. So, tell tell us what happened. Tell us in your own words what happened. Well, so I am still alive. That's definitely true. And I was given, you know, an ultimatum. I saw, I read the story like everybody else the next day. I'll tell you what happened. I was, at, in fact, at the uh, Loose Bar and Grill at night, and I was walking walking home to my apartment. And and I was uh, I was approached, and I was, you know, questioned, and, and, uh, and I was roughed up a little bit. And these, these gentlemen, they wanted to know, what I knew, a lot of it was was very uh, distorted information that they were they were saying. They were they were creating these scenarios. Were you here? Were you there? Were you over here? Did you know this guy and that guy? And it was just it was a lot of uh, it was a lot of very unusual questions. I believe they were, they were FBI. I'm not really sure. And to this day, I really don't know. So I was not shot. I have no bullet holes in me. Uh, I was there and approached and then I was given an ultimatum they said that that uh, they knew that I had been involved in this see I never knew how how serious <laughs> it was going to be you know I we never the people that w when we were looking at this we thought that it would just be oh look they 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 were exposed and now they'll lay down their arms and and uh and confess their sins but they never did that they doubled down on it and tried to uh you know, create the illusion that I was killed, and so I was given an ultimatum, and the reason why I'm talking about this, I don't know if anybody even believes it's me, but it certainly is, and you know it is, because of the person that reached out to you and told you who I am, so you know that I am who I am, and so I was, I pretty much, I did in fact, you know, get to say goodbye to my family, and they, they know the, the whole story, and, uh, and, you know, I've, I constantly still worry, you know, worry that they're going to knock me off. And, uh, but I am still alive, and I am, I'm in Israel right now. And, uh, well, listen, I'm, you know, I'm a, I, grew, I was raised a Jew, and now I'm back in Israel. And that's, a, that's, a, that's an okay place to be for, you know, it's an okay place to be for, for, for now. Oh, my God. So that is just, that is just so fucking fascinating, man. So... So you're in Israel right now, and um, and that's that's pretty cool. It's better than being dead, right? It's better than being dead. It's better than being, you know, locked up in a in a jail cell for thirty years. I, you know, I commend you for doing that. There's no shame in in uh, in what you did. So, I guess. Um, oh, you know what I wanted to ask you about this this. Uh, see, when they the the story we got here was that when you uh, allegedly were were killed and then uh, disappeared. This this guy, uh, what was his name? Jack Berkman. Remember Jack Berkman? He was he was hired in in uh, Septemberish, right after you uh, disappeared, to make you uh, to to basically run some interference with the press. But then it turned out that he he actually started to convince your family that that somehow you had been knocked off by the Russians, and your family swiftly fired him. Can you can you confirm all that? Yes, Mr. Berkman approached us. He was he was a Democratic operative of some sort. He he we didn't I never met I never met Mr. Berkman prior to uh, prior I met him once, and yes he he the, as the story like I said I don't have contact direct contact with with family so I read it like you read it and Berkman was pretty much a guy who was going to try to sell this Russian narrative because they had at this point were, were, were you know they had lost the election 
right? It was already January 2017. And it became it became something that they could possibly pin on on Trump. Right now, I'm speculating like you're speculating because at the time there really was no Russia story. It was kind of this this other thing, and I and and as you know, I did Hillary Clinton did speak on on my behalf, and she was so sorry, and 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 Debbie Wasserman Schultz, they were so sorry that I was that I was killed. They may still think I'm dead. I I don't know for sure if they think I'm dead or they they. You know, maybe Hillary Clinton thinks that she had me killed or inadvertently, but I am definitely, definitely grateful to not be dead. These are some, these are some nefarious characters, and uh, they definitely deserve, uh, you know, treason, and and uh, they're not, they're really not nice people. Uh, so Trump winning over Bernie. And Bernie, Bernie turned out to be a real coward. We, I had spoken to Bernie Sanders. I had met Bernie Sanders, and felt like he, he just, he he betrayed uh, a lot, a lot of young people. And I don't think there's, I don't think there's ever, ever any forgiveness for that. He just, uh, but uh, we can always hope that a, a another candidate will come up that is for the people. And of the people, well, I, you know, I'm not, I'm in Israel now, so I don't, I don't vote anymore, but, uh, I'm hopeful that, that, uh, I'm hopeful that people, uh, understand that I was not a Russian agent, that I was a Sanders supporter in favor of Sanders' platform, which was universal health care and uh, raising the minimum wage, which was a very topical issue at the time. And mostly getting money out of politics. You could see that this is all a result of the money in politics. Uh, the money in politics became more important than the people and the vote. So this is amazing, man. It's amazing. I'm I'm so happy for you that at least you found a little peace. You get to live the rest of your life in um in Israel. Israel's a nice place, right? It's a, you know it's 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 a cool place to be. I don't really have any other questions. Is there any? <sighs> Excuse me. I'm taking a drink. So, do you have any uh, anything else? I mean, what's your what's your insight? What would you like to tell the people that still think you're dead? Well, first of all, I know there's a there's a story of uh, that somehow it was it was uh, uh, Warren Buffett and my my ties because I had grown up in Omaha, Nebraska, and I had met uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Buffett many times. But uh, I assure you that these these are not. These maybe they he had an influence in this thing uh, as a second or third degree of separation, but certainly he was not instrumental. This was this was a decision made by the deep state FBI that what I had revealed uh, was too damaging to admit because then they would have had, had to admit that even the president of the United States at the time, Barack Obama, was involved in deep, deep election fraud. So, in retrospect, as I, as I look back on, on what it was, I think that that is the most important thing that people should know about the 2016 election, that the Democratic Party rigged the election against Bernie Sanders, and they elevated Donald Trump, thinking that they could beat him easily. And it turned out that Donald Trump was far you know greater uh was far more popular and he uh exceeded that margin of cheating so well that he, he he ultimately won because it didn't look like hillary clinton could beat anybody she couldn't you know she couldn't fill up a a uh, she couldn't fill up a gymnasium and bernie sanders was putting 25 30 thousand people in a stadium so the people were with Bernie, and the the donors were with Hillary, and the money won out, and they ran everybody out of the the DNC, and uh, you know at that point I was already gone, and uh, it's just the the memory is starting to fade, but I hope someday to be able to come back to the U.S. if uh, if if it, if it all if it all possible. So. Wow. So. Thank you so much, Seth. I'm going to let you go now. We're already at about 15 minutes, and this is YouTube. People have very, very limited uh, attention span. So, 
Thank you so much for uh, calling in. That's just, so uh, I'll let you go now. So, so this is Seth Rich calling in from Israel, and uh, we're very grateful that he's, uh, he took the time out to, um, to uh, speak to us. Uh, my name is Marcus Conti. I'm an investigative journalist and reporter here on YouTube. If you like this programming, kindly make a contribution down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and, and maybe leave a comment. Thank you so much. Peace.